Hey guys, we're back with some more whitetail content and in today's video we're going to be going over how to establish a clover stand or a clover plot. This plot was planted last August, mid-August of 2019 and it is uh, early May right now of 2020. So as you can see, it's coming in great and we're going to go over exactly how we put in this plot and also kind of go over another way you can put in your clover plot. When you're trying to establish a uh, really any food plot, but in this, in this video we're going to be talking particularly about clover, there's a couple things you want to do. The first step to any food plot is getting a soil test. Send it in to whoever you want to use, whether it's a local university. Uh, I send mine into Whitetail Institute. They do a great job. They, they, they send you back a, a soil test that's very user friendly, easy to read, and, they'll, and if you kind of give them an idea of what you want to plant, they'll come back with exactly the uh, their recommendation for fertilizer requirements or you know the, the lime requirements for, to um, address the pH in the soil. And, and that's the, the, the most important step in, in your food plot is making sure that you get your, your soil uh, pH corrected and, and that way your, your uh, plants can, and can take up the nutrients that they require. So you, you got your, your spot picked out, you got your soil test back, you're working on amending the soil. The next thing that you need to do is make sure that your plot is getting adequate sunlight. And this is gonna be you know, easier for some of you and more difficult for others. It de really depends on the location that you chose. So if you, this is a, a three quarter acre clearing in the woods. So we didn't have to do much here to make sure that this plot was getting a lot of sunlight. However, I, I have put uh, micro plots, you know, kind of smaller kill plots, poor man plots in, uh, in the middle of the hardwoods, and those require a little bit more work for making sure that you get enough sunlight. And so what you need to do in that instance is you need to drop the trees in the area that you're gonna be uh, putting in your food plot, and you'll know, block them up, you know, cut them up for firewood, take the tops, move the tops away. One thing to consider when making sure you're getting enough sunlight, it's not just the, the large canopy trees um, that are covering your plot, you also need to make sure that you're removing the trees on the south side of your plot. So the trees that are just off the edge of your plot on the south side, those are gonna block the sunlight in the late summer, early fall. So as the earth rotates throughout the year, in the fall, the sun is gonna be a lot lower in the sky. And what that means, it's gonna be a lot harder for that sunlight to hit your plot unless you remove those trees on the southern edge of your food plot. So once you've made sure that your plot is gonna be getting the required amount of sunlight, the next thing that you need to do is prepare the seed bed. And what I mean by that is you need to expose the soil. Clover is a very small seed. It needs to have good seed to soil contact. So the biggest thing that we had to do with this was get rid of the existing vegetation. And there's a couple things we could have done. We could have came in here and, and mowed several times, you know, maybe disked it several times throughout the summer. If you continue to disk the field and continue to kill the roots of these weeds, the chance that they're gonna to continue to come back is, is low. Um, they, they will still come back, but you, but you can get a good seed bed primarily with disking if you're not comfortable using chemicals. But the best way to get a weed-free plot in the long run is by using chemicals. So what you need to do is you probably need to spray two to three times uh, throughout the year, starting in, in uh, late spring. So once, once, the, um, once the plants you know, get to be maybe thigh high, uh, you know, knee to thigh high, you, you come in here with some glyphosate and some 2,4-D and you spray the plot. So when it's all said and done, um, for like an old field application like this, after you've done your sprayings, you're gonna be left with kind of a barren wasteland of dying, decomposing vegetation. If you're doing an in the woods plot, uh, the end goal is no different. You wanna expose the soil, and it's, it's just gonna be a little bit different approach in how you do it. So in the woods, you're most likely gonna have a lot of pine needles, a lot of leaves, it, it, you know, a lot of decomposing logs and branches and so what you need to do in that case is it's just going to be some manual labor you're just going to have to go in there and rake the leaves uh, pull them off with a tarp get a leaf blower uh, blow them off the plot carry the logs off carry the sticks off but you want to make sure that you're clearing the site so that all you're left with is bare dirt so now we're on to seeding. We, we have a great seed bed, now it's on to seeding. So there's a couple things that you need to uh, think about when you're seeding clover, and it really comes down to how you're gonna be putting it down. Like, are you using the disking approach? Are you going to be killing the weeds with herbicide and, you're, and not disturbing the soil? It, it kind of depends on, on those two things. So for this plot right here, 
all I did was I came in here and I sprayed three times. So I think it was once in May, once in mid-June maybe, and then once in the end of July. So I, I sprayed it three times, everything was dead. I came in here before, I thought we were gonna get rain in early August, and I put my clover seeds down. And it grew. it grew, it grew great. Now the other way you can go about doing this is if you disked to, to turn, kind of loosen the dirt up a little bit, to, to try to help, out, to help those clover seeds maybe get buried a little deeper in the dirt. Um, let's say you, you disked, what you wanna make sure you do is you disk the soil and then pack it down with a culta packer, a lawn roller, maybe your ATV tires. You, you, you wanna make sure you firm up that seed bed because when you disc the soil, you're gonna be loosening up the dirt probably down to like a half inch to an inch. And those clover seeds are so small that if they fall too far down below the top of the dirt, that they're gonna germinate, but they're not gonna be able to, to get up there. And then you, what you wanna do, then you wanna go over and seed your clover at the appropriate seeding rate for, the, for whatever variety you're planting. And then you wanna go over it again with the culta packer or the lawn roller or your ATV tires because you wanna drive that clover seed back into the ground. So it's, it's a firm seed bed, then seeds, then drive over it to, to pack it in. And that's really gonna help with the seed to soil contact and help with your germination rate. When I did this right here, I did not um, call to pack it down. I did not run over it with a lawnmower or ATV or anything like that. I knew that we were gonna get a pretty heavy, heavy rain in the next couple days after I planted. So I knew that that rain was gonna drive those seeds to the ground. And I knew that that dying vegetation was really gonna protect my clover seeds. And, and that was gonna help push it down as well. Now it still would have been a good idea for me to come back in here and call to pack it. But I just wanted to also show you that if you're spreading tiny clover seeds into the dying vegetation. If you miss that step or if you don't have one, it's, it's not going to be the end of the world. Now, one thing you wanna make sure you're looking out for when you are planting your clover is that you have rain in the forecast. Uh, so, so not just like a 20% chance of, you know, a 10th of an inch of rain. You, you want, you know, a pretty good chance of, of a system to come through and saturate your field. So another thing I'll, I will say about planting clover, if you think you have a lot of deer in your area, and, or, or rabbits, or just wildlife in general, one thing you can do to give your clover kind of a little bit of an advantage is to plant a nurse crop along with it. And a nurse crop is just something that's gonna kind of grow up with the clover to give the animals something else to eat and to munch on while your clover is getting established. The first thing that your clover wants to do is grow down. That's where the cereal rye comes in. So when your clover pops up, it's very small and it's working on its root system, the cereal rye will grow a little bit taller and those deer will, will start eating the cereal rye instead of your clover. Because if they just start munching on your clover, they'll kill it before it can even get established. Once it gets established, it's very browse tolerant, but you need to let it get established first. Now we do recognize that there's not really a one size fits all approach to food plots, but hopefully this video helped in explaining kind of the three S's that we try to follow. And that's the soil test, sunlight, and seed bed. And kind of our approach to doing two different types of scenarios of, uh, of a clover plot, whether it's putting it in, into an existing field like this, or whether it's putting it into a, uh, a in the woods plot or a small uh, kill plot back in the timber. If you guys do have any questions in regards to planting a clover plot, please drop them in the comment section below. I'll uh, answer those as soon as I can, but we will see you guys in the next video. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of an idea on, on how to go about planting. Turkey.